Hi teams, it's Adam Osprey here, Policy and Development Pharmacist at CPS. I thought I'd give you a bit of a break from the Professor and Mr Barclay for a change. And I hope you're all doing well. Um, you, you've all got so much to deal with on a daily basis. It's it's absolutely incredible that you've managed to carry on delivering all the services you always have done throughout the pandemic, never mind adapting to dramatically different ways of working and helping your communities in a thousand and one new and wonderful ways. Um, the stories we've heard and are sharing on your behalf with, with stakeholders are, are nothing short of heroic, to be honest. Um, we are always looking for more, so if you've got any recent examples of what you've been up to, um, please do send them into our inquiries inbox. What I'm here to talk about you just now, though, is how you can give yourselves the very best chance of keeping your pharmacy COVID secure and open, uh, importantly, to carry on caring for your communities in all these ways that only you are able to do. Over the last few weeks, you might have seen the content on our Winter Ready Hub and on our social media posts highlighting uh, the COVID lessons that we've learned from the pharmacy network from you and your, your colleagues and other pharmacies. Now, these have all been developed as we work with Health, Health Protection Scotland, Public Health Scotland and local health NHS teams to both understand the national guidance that's in place and also to pick apart those um, close calls or unfortunate instances where COVID has actually managed to spread within the community pharmacy setting. Now, Clearly, you will be busy, so I'd like to just quickly go through a few of these lessons that are particularly important, um, just so that you can note them just now and you don't have to troll through all our social media posts or scroll through the Winter Ready Hub uh, to find them, though I would absolutely recommend taking a look at the Winter Ready Hub if you haven't done so already. So let's get started with a, a, few, quick, uh, a few quick points on COVID. Number one, first and foremost, it's a really good idea to make sure that your team leaders uh, and the wider pharmacy teams are aware of National Health Protection Scotland infection control guidance. And if they're not already, then getting a copy of that and working your way through it is, is really a priority and I can't stress that enough. Now you can find a link to that guidance in the bio below um, or go to the COVID-19 guidance for primary care at hps.scot.nhs.uk where you can find all the information you need from Health Protection Scotland. Now I'll not lie, it is a big document, but every single recommendation that's in there is evidence-based and it'll give you and your colleagues the very best chance of keeping your environment, people and service safe. Most of our observations and lessons and the one, what we'll talk about in this video um, all link back to this guidance. So lesson two, what we've learned is that the risk assessments you'll have probably carried out at the start of the COVID outbreak, if you can remember that long ago, probably focus a little bit more on the transmission between patients in the public and your team than they necessarily do between members of your team. Now, it's important that equal consideration is given to both forms of transmission of the virus. And that's particularly important just now because Test and Protect is now fully up and running. Any one of your team members could be unlucky enough to catch this virus outside of work. But what you can do is you can put measures in place in the workplace to take luck out of the equation as far as is possible. When it comes to spread within the pharmacy, if it's unchecked, it can lead to pharmacy closure. You know what it's like after one day of a bank holiday. Can you imagine after a fortnight of everyone self-isolating? So what we're recommending is that risk assessments should be undertaken in staff areas, as well as public areas, to ensure that national guidance, social distancing rules, and infection control measures are being implemented as far as they can be. From some of the cases we've been involved in recently, it's the off the clock moments, if I can put it that way, that are cropping up as a common theme where things go a little bit wrong. So for example, tea breaks together with masks off. That five minutes when you're rolling the shutters up in the morning and down at night, having a chat without masks on or car sharing with colleagues. You can do all these things, but they need to be done in a safe way. Otherwise, all that effort you put in during the day wearing all your masks is worth nothing. And it's just those moments of vulnerability that we really need to pay attention to. Number three, now, the physical layout of community pharmacy premises we've learned can limit effective two metre social distancing between teams. Due to this, team members might perform multiple duties with a crossover of team members standing next to each other. That might contribute to both contact and droplet transmission if the virus is present. What we've seen is that some teams have managed through a reduction in staffing levels, sometimes split shifts or staggered hours. They could explore this as a means of maintaining social distancing within the available space. But 
it might not be possible to reduce your staffing numbers without having an adverse effect on your safe and effective service delivery. Also, social distancing could actually get better with more staff present because it might allow staff to work in a single location on a single task to a greater extent. It's about finding the best fit solution for your team. Sometimes though, and I've worked in some total wee pharmacies myself, this just isn't possible at all. So it's the other measures that all teams should be taking that really come into play here. So for example, wearing the recommended PP that's appropriate to the task and the environment that you're in is absolutely essential. For the vast majority of pharmacy teams, this means the fluid resistant masks that are available from the NHS order line, uh, which is soon to be an online portal. It's a rough guide. These should be changed four times a day. So we're talking tea breaks and lunch um, and at a minimum every four hours following the donning and doffing procedures that you can find in the primary care guidance that we mentioned earlier. Regular cleaning schedules. These are also a must to help mitigate viral spread and to help your case if you become involved in a test and protect situation. Again, Analysis of recent cases of pharmacy transmissions have shown that the cleaning of common touch points such as tote boxes, door handles, tills and phones are all critical to reducing risk. The fourth point I'd like to make is that we've learned that ultimately we're all human. It's entirely possible that despite putting infection control measures in place and doing everything that we've talked about already, there'll still be the possibility that a positive test for one of your team or their families has an impact on your pharmacy service provision. For this, you need to be as ready as you possibly can be. So there's two aspects to this. The first one, thankfully, Amanda Ray in the office has been working really closely with Health Protection Scotland and other stakeholders. And I'm glad to say that in the next few weeks, pharmacy owners will get a pack in their inbox, which will contain some newly developed national forms and guidance for exactly what needs to be done the moment a positive case is identified in your pharmacy team. When you get it, please read it, understand it. And although I hope you never have to use it, Keep it within easy reach for the day that you have a positive case. The second aspect to being ready is having a good quality business continuity plan. So you all know even better than I do that you can't simply close a pharmacy down like you would drop the shutters on a shop if you're instructed to by Test and Protect or if your team becomes so small that it's not safe to operate. There's a whole load to think about and prioritise and it's far better to do that now than in an incredibly high stress and time pressured closure scenario. So we'd recommend that you go and have a look at your continuity plan if you haven't dusted it off in a while. Okay, so that's everything that we'd like to highlight this evening. Um, please let us know whether you found this useful or whether you didn't. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who was involved in pulling together these points and important lessons. Um, it's crucial now more than ever that we're able to reflect and learn from each other as a whole network so that we protect our pharmacy teams and the services that the network provide to the people of Scotland. So. If you have any other COVID lessons that you'd like to share, please do get in touch with us. You can do that through email, through your inquiries inbox, or by commenting below. But for just now, um, I will let you get back to the evening, um, back to your teams, and back to considering if there's anything else you need to do to keep your pharmacy COVID secure.